It was once believed by mainstream paleoanthropology that modern humans were a pure, untainted species who evolved in a Garden of Eden in northeastern Africa before emerging to conquer the planet 40,000 years ago, driving all other human species to extinction without any interbreeding in an ancient manifest destiny. Now, a controversial new study rewrites this oversimplified way of thinking. All modern humans carry 20% DNA from an archaic ghost population from interbreeding 300,000 years ago. An estimated 20% of archaic ghost ancestry was absorbed into the expanding modern human gene pool. This was not a single mating between two individuals. It was a population-scale merger involving hundreds or thousands of interbreeding events over many generations. The timeline of this fusion paints a vivid picture. Around 1.5 million years ago, the human lineage in Africa split into two. One branch gave rise to the ancestors of Homo sapiens and separately to Neanderthals and Denisovans. This lineage experienced a bottleneck and reduced diversity but eventually re-expanded. The other branch, Population B, continued to evolve independently for more than a million years. Then, around 300,000 years ago, the two branches met again in southern Africa. Their reunion, after a million years of separation, resulted in the emergence of a new human population that would soon spread across the continent and, eventually, the globe. When researchers scanned the human genome with new analytical tools, they uncovered a hidden story stretching back hundreds of thousands of years. All modern humans from every continent carry within them the genetic legacy of a mysterious population that had long been forgotten. This lineage, which split from our ancestors around 1.5 million years ago, remained isolated for more than a million years. Then, around 300,000 years ago, they encountered and merged with the ancestors of Homo sapiens. This archaic population, labelled Population B, left an astonishing 20% genetic legacy in all living humans today. That amount of ancestry is ten times greater than the Neanderthal contribution to non-Africans and suggests a massive demographic and evolutionary event. The most plausible candidate for this archaic population is a group of hominins represented by the 300,000-year-old Kabwe skull, a robust, archaic cranium discovered in southern Africa and typically identified as Homo heidelbergensis, though another candidate would be the 330,000-year-old Jebel Irhud fossils from northwestern Africa, classified as early Homo sapiens. The recent breakthrough came from a coalescent-based genetic model, which does not rely on ancient DNA from fossils, but instead infers deep ancestral relationships from modern genomes. This method allowed researchers to uncover a ghost population, one that had not been detected in any fossil with preserved DNA, but whose signal exists in the patterns of shared ancestry and recombination among modern human genomes. This ghost lineage is not an offshoot like Neanderthals or Denisovans. It is more deeply diverged and more foundational. The data show that this ghost lineage, known as Population B, split off from the ancestors of modern humans over a million years ago, and remained isolated until an admixture event occurred roughly 300,000 years ago. This population then contributed 20% of the DNA in the resulting hybrid lineage, which gave rise to Homo sapiens. To understand what this means, one must first appreciate the nature of population A and population B. Population A refers to the lineage that directly gave rise to Homo sapiens, and also to Neanderthals and Denisovans. This lineage emerged from an ancestral population in Africa, which went through a severe bottleneck, meaning its numbers dropped dramatically, shortly after its divergence from Population B. This bottleneck reduced genetic diversity and rendered Population B vulnerable to random genetic shifts. But it also created a more homogeneous genome structure that would later serve as the backbone of modern humans. Despite this bottleneck, Population A ultimately grew into the dominant lineage from which modern humans would emerge. Population B, in contrast, remained genetically separate for more than a million years. It evolved in parallel, likely spread across parts of Africa, and developed its own distinct characteristics. 
The model suggests that Lineage B maintained a large and stable effective population size throughout this long isolation. In fact, the estimated effective population size of population B during the structured period, between the divergence at 1.5 million years ago and the admixture around 300,000 years ago, was considerably larger than that of Lineage A. While population A may have had an effective population size of only 10,000 to 15,000 individuals during its bottleneck, population B's size was estimated to be in the range of 30,000 to 40,000 individuals. This is particularly striking because lineage A is usually imagined as the main trunk of the Homo sapiens tree, but during this period, lineage B was actually the larger and more genetically diverse group. Effective population size is a genetic estimate and undercounts the actual number of living individuals. The real population, what we call the census size, might have been five to ten times larger. Population A might have numbered only 50,000 to 100,000 individuals at the time of contact. Population B might have comprised 150,000 to 300,000 people, scattered across Africa in different semi-isolated bands or tribes. The interbreeding would have occurred in ecological contact zones, perhaps along rivers, hunting grounds, or shared watering holes. This wasn't a war of replacement, like what happened to the Neanderthals in Europe. It was a biological and cultural fusion. The admixture event around 300,000 years ago marked a turning point. As Population A moved into southern Africa, from the north, they encountered groups from Population B, which may have been descended from hominins like those represented by the Kabwe skull, which displays a mix of archaic and modern features and has been dated to approximately 300,000 years ago. The fossil has long been debated by paleoanthropologists. It has often been classified as Homo heidelbergensis, or archaic Homo sapiens. What is now clear is that this type of population, deeply diverged, robust and evolving separately for over a million years, likely survived in southern Africa and encountered the expanding modern human lineage just as Homo sapiens was emerging. It could have been in another region, Africa, but we can only speculate using the most probable scenario. Kabwe man, robust and ancient, may have been one of the last of his kind to resist this tidal wave of change. Kabwe is one of the most beautifully preserved of all human fossils. The skull suggests an extremely robust individual with the largest brow ridges of any known hominin. The skull resembles, in an extraordinary degree, the skulls of the Neanderthal Man of European, but has an even more brutish aspect, one early anthropologist noted. But the story of Kabwe Man may also offer a darker glimpse into the past. His skull, astonishingly well preserved, contains an unsettling clue, a small circular lesion at the top of the cranium, just behind the frontal bone. Though long debated, this puncture has been interpreted by some researchers as a possible spear wound, perhaps delivered by a sharpened wooden shaft or bone-tipped weapon. The shape and placement of the hole are not consistent with animal predation or post-mortem damage. They suggest instead a violent impact, one that may have occurred at or near the time of death. If this interpretation is correct, it raises haunting questions. Who killed Kabwe Man? Was he struck by a rival within his own group, or by someone from the modern population? Could his death represent a moment of interspecies conflict, a microcosm of a much larger continent-wide drama, as archaic populations and early Homo sapiens came into contact? We do not know for certain. But what is also strange is where Kabwe Man was found, not in a burial pit or cave, but in a vertical shaft, a deep, dark tunnel within a mineral-rich cave. His skull was unearthed from a site riddled with underground chambers and crevices, a place that does not resemble natural living space. This gives rise to a chilling possibility. Was his body discarded into the shaft? Was Cowboy Man murdered and deliberately thrown into darkness to erase the evidence? While we may never know the exact sequence of events that led to his death, history suggests that the contact between Population A and Population B may not have always been peaceful. The merger between these two populations may have included moments of violence, resistance, and ultimately, conquest. The surviving legacy of Population B, 
those 20% of archaic genes may be the remnants of a larger, older population that was gradually absorbed through dominance, displacement, and interbreeding. Yet it is also possible that his people were not wiped out but rather gradually incorporated. The genetic data suggest a major admixture event, not a small-scale absorption. This was not a case of a few women captured or a trickle of hybrid children. Instead, it was a large-scale population merger, likely involving hundreds or thousands of individuals across generations. It would have required sustained contact and overlapping territories. While conflict may have played a role in initial encounters, the survival of population B genes, especially in neural and behavioral pathways, points to a functional integration that benefited the emerging modern human lineage. This fusion likely laid the foundation for the emergence of fully anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Shortly after the admixture, we begin to see fossils across Africa that reflect this transition. These populations were no longer just population A. They were the result of a hybridization with population B, and they carried within them a blend of anatomical features and genetic legacies. The significance of this discovery cannot be overstated. For decades, anthropologists debated whether modern humans arose through a single unbroken lineage or through a mosaic of interbreeding populations. The evidence now strongly supports the latter. Homo sapiens did not arise from a single isolated cradle. Instead, our species was forged in the fusion of divergent hominin lineages that had spent vast spans of time evolving separately. Even more striking is the possibility that Population B's contribution helped to push our cognitive evolution forward. The fact that some of these ghost population genes were retained, especially in areas related to brain development and behavior, suggests that the merger was not just demographic, but also functional. While the majority of population B-derived DNA was selected against, some of it may have offered real advantages, possibly influencing our neurological development, social complexity, or adaptability. Some of the genes from population B, particularly those related to brain function and neural processing, may have played a crucial role in human evolution, study co-author Trevor Cousins told Live Science. However, who those populations were is unclear. In the study, the researchers noted that various Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis populations that are potential candidates for population A and B existed both in Africa and elsewhere in the relevant period. However, the genetic model cannot indicate which fossils should be assigned to population A or B, we can only speculate, Cousin said. But Cabway Man fits the place and time. In the end, this story reminds us that the origin of Homo sapiens was not a singular event, but a transformative encounter between ancient human populations. When the ancestors of modern humans migrated into southern Africa and met the descendants of an older, more archaic ghost lineage, perhaps one very much like Kabwe, they did not simply eliminate them. They joined with them. From that fusion came the spark that would spread across Africa and eventually light the rest of the world, though not every geneticist agrees with the study. What's becoming clear is that the idea of species evolving in clean, distinct lineages is too simplistic, Cousin said. Interbreeding and genetic exchange have played a major role in the emergence of new species repeatedly across the animal kingdom.